events, decisions, and actions of life from God's point of view. You know, we live in a society where momentary pleasures are what we all go for. You know, we go to school because we want to, uh, we want to get a good education. We want to get a high-paying job, not just a good job. No one wants a good job. We're way past that. We want a high-paying job. We want to have a nice car. We want to have a nice house. We want to live a nice, lavish lifestyle. Because that's the society that we're brought up in. You know, very rarely do we look at a society where, you know, you grow up to be happy. You know, live a fruitful life. Live a life pleasing to God. We're well past that. You know, sadly, nowadays, success is now measured by the, the worldly gains that we have. You know, like I said, like I keep bringing up the cars, the houses, the money. That's what success now is defined by. One thing that one thing that I thought about recently as I was preparing for my message, one thought that randomly popped up was that there are no guarantees in life. There's nothing that this life offers us. Now there is a saying that says that the only two guarantees in life are death and taxes. <laughs> Those two for sure will happen. You don't know when you'll die, but until you die, you will pay taxes. Those are the only two guarantees in life. But until then, what other guarantee do we have? Nothing. But the one, one guarantee that we do have is that Jesus will come back. He will take us up to heaven, and we will stand in front of God. God won't ask us, what, when God asks us, what did you do to further my kingdom? You can't say, oh, I went to church on Sunday, or I sang on stage, or I said a youth message, I played the drum, I go to church. That all doesn't really mean anything. What did you do to further my kingdom? And that's my question to you today. What did you do to further the kingdom of God? I just hope that, you know, when I stand in front of God, at least in, my, in the future, that I want to be able to say that, God, I spread the gospel. As this year is coming to an end, we still have time. And as 2014 is knocking at our doors, we still have plenty of opportunity to make our lives right. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 15, it says, Do not love the world, nor the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, it's not bad to love the things of the world. You know, I myself one day hope to own a nice car and live, a nice, live in a nice house make a little bit of money, and that's all good. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's, it's when you begin to love those things, that's where the issue is. Because in this verse, God gives us two choices, and two choices only. You either love the world, or you love God. I don't think there's a gray area in there. You have to pick which one you want. And when you begin to love the things of the world, like I said, you, you, your eternal perspective becomes begins to be clouded. Like you just don't begin to think clearly. Everything everything just just doesn't just doesn't add up at the end of the day. So you know, as I come towards you know the conclusion, um, as I come towards the conclusion of my message, there's only three things that I want you to remember. Don't let your eternal perspective get mixed up with your earthly possessions. Always remember that there's a clear definition of your earthly perspective, I mean uh, eternal perspective and earthly possession. Know the difference. Secondly, you cannot, when you get to heaven, God will ask you, what did you do to further my kingdom? Excuse me. What did you do to further my kingdom? Remember that you cannot buy your way into heaven. You cannot smart talk your way into heaven. God knows what you've done, and he will have, and he will have the answer to that. And finally, you have two choices, like I said, in this topic. Either you love this world, or you love God. And you have to pick today which one, which one that is. Now, and like I said, I mean, this message was relatively short, but I hope that this message did bring some light uh, and open your eyes on this eternal perspective. Thank you so much.